Hey guys, what's up? It's 8-Bit Eric, and today's game is going to be Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered for the Nintendo Switch. This is a remastering of probably one of the best games in the whole Assassin's Creed series. I know this game has had a lot of mixed reactions and reviews back in the day, but I actually had this on previous consoles. I had it on the Wii U and also on the Xbox, I believe. And I actually have been a big fan of this game for quite some time. So when I found out it was coming over to Nintendo Switch, I was like, hell yeah, because this remastered came out quite some time ago on PS4 and Xbox One. Switch came late to the party as usual. I was a little worried, would this run great? Would it be just as good as the PS4 and Xbox One versions? And I was like, man, you know, I hope so, because it seems at times the Switch versions of lots of games just kind of get that little inferior version of the same game that the other consoles get, and people get pretty wild up about it within right reason. So guys, we are going to find out, is Assassin's Creed 3 remastered on the Nintendo Switch a very good version of the remastered or should you just stay away from it so guys if you're brand new to the channel feel free to throw a subscription and let's go ahead and begin the video so assassin's creed 3 remastered is a remastering of assassin's creed 3 i mean thank you captain obvious now if you haven't played assassin's creed any of them it might be a little confusing at first when you jump into the story of Assassin's Creed 3. The timeline is like so like all over the place when it comes to this series. You really should go back and play the other two that came before this because it does leave off where Desmond and some of his family and cohorts and you know colleagues and stuff are using the Animus to reach a uh, uh, ancestor that is in the American Revolution age, you know, like the Declaration of Independence age, the Boston Tea Party, Paul Revere, stuff like that. I really think the setting, you know, 1776, 78, 77, that, that timeline is actually really neat for a game. And the game actually shows the main character on the front, Connor. What's interesting about this one, and I know a lot of people that might initially play Assassin's Creed 3 might not have the patience for this. It actually takes a few good hours before you even get to play as Connor. You, you initially start the game as Connor's father. I don't want to go into too much detail or spoil anything, but his father is a, an assassin that is, you know, targets certain characters that are part of the British Parliament throughout the game and there's a lot of history involved it's kind of interesting because there's historical accurate events that happen with fictional creative licensing that happens in this game but yeah you control his father who's an assassin you perform a lot of different stuff I think it's like until like the fourth sequence or so before Connor even gets introduced but it takes quite some time and I know one of the biggest complaints I've seen for this game is that its initial like introduction and everything just takes so long i mean the, the beginning part of the game you're actually like on a boat for quite some time then you land in the new world you have to perform a whole bunch of stuff you see historical figures like benjamin franklin and stuff like that as his father eventually stuff goes down you start controlling connor who is a native american and he learns his destiny is to fight the Templars and become an assassin. And from there, you also, just like your father, get involved with like historical figures, you know, Samuel Adams and Paul, Paul Revere and different kinds of characters as you complete some of the most historical uh, events of all time, you know, like the Boston Tea Party, the Midnight Ride, stuff like that. So the setting is pretty neat I, I just had to fair warn you guys that it does take quite some time to actually get to where the game becomes connor and controlling him as the assassin uh, it takes actually a little too long so if you don't have patience you might initially be like yo this game sucks but once you clear it to where you're playing as connor the game opens wide open it goes into an open world type of game initially playing as a father and everything it's pretty linear you don't get to explore as much there are a little bit of side quests and things like that 
but the game completely revamps everything about it so much more features you know hunting exploring side quest naval ships and stuff like that riding the big boat that you get at one point in the game opens up to you the game becomes something else and i kind of wish as good as this game is by the original date i think this came out like what 08 09 way back in the day almost 10 years i think by this standard that was an amazing game back then you know we didn't have you know low attention span that gamers including myself have today but for 2019 i think this game does start off pretty slow it's not a bad thing i like cinematic narratives and stories and stuff but i will say the beginning parts of this game are very cutscene heavy and the, the even though it is remastered the cutscenes kind of look creepy you know like the eyeballs of the characters are all like like big bug eyes and stuff like that so that's as far as graphical complaints go the cutscenes still feel a little bit outdated but the rest of the game itself once you get going once you see the world once you explore it looks very smooth and crisp so i feel the remastering of this game is actually rather obvious you got to remember this is a remastered port of a really old game so you can't come in thinking it's going to be totally like revamped that's what a remake is this is a remastered don't get it confused i know a lot of gamers kind of get confused on what's the difference between each this is a big big remastered you know color corrected smoothed out version of a game that came out a long time ago and it's aged okay i just feel that the opening has kind of slowed down a little bit longer than this review is already taking so the controls spot on if you've played an open world game this is pretty much like that there are quick buttons for like a quick attack if you push x you can like shoot your gun or your musket or your bow real quick and shoot any kind of targeted enemy you have the combat is actually based on stealth uh depending on your notoriety which is like how wanted you are with the red coats and other kind of enemies on screen is how hostile they are towards you you spend a lot of time being stealthy in assassin's creed because assassins are supposed to be stealthy so you use a lot of the environment climbing the rooftops hiding in hay hiding in tall grass to gain the advantage of your of your opponents you can like stealth kill him you can shoot him with a bow everything like that he's he's a native american connor is a native american so he plays up on the whole stealth aspect and things like that and i think he controls wonderfully especially when you're exploring climbing the rooftops and everything i think it's really neat i prefer playing with a pro controller i can't imagine using the joy con for a game like this especially a huge you know game that takes several hours to play i've i'm over about 10 hours in at this point and there's just so much to honestly do i actually have like fallen in love with this game i i played this one so much originally on my original xbox and i can tell you that the switch version is just as good now there are minor problems with this game for one anytime that you're transferring from like a big cutscene or loading into a new chapter or whatever there's a sound issue that is just really weird it sounds like the, the sound is just really struggling to load and it gets cackly and crackly sometimes that was a real huge noticeable problem with this game it was kind of annoying because a lot again a lot of the game early on is cutscene heavy uh also i did notice a little bit of frame rate issues in certain cutscenes and for the switch version i gotta say it being touted as a remastered and the beginning part of the game being very cutscene heavy having two glaring problems like audio kind of bugging out and frame rate issues in a lot of the cutscenes that's not a very good look at all especially if it since it takes so long to get to where the game is less cutscene heavy but once you get past that i know this sounds like a pretty strange excuse you know similar and i don't want anybody to attack me but i felt xenoblade 2 on the switch was really slow and people were like dude get to certain part of the game and then it picks up unfortunately assassin's creed 3 does the same thing and i i, I don't want to like defend that even though this game is really old we can't really you know compare that because xenoblade was a brand new game made that year this is a port of a game that you can't really change how the game was made 10 years later i just feel that it's not a good look to to have a remastered version of a game that struggles with certain things like cutscenes and music if it's going to depend on that you know what i mean now 
honestly, price of this game to get it physically was only $40. That is fantastic for a Nintendo Switch game. And I know it sounds ridiculous to say that, to say, oh man, 40 bucks for a remaster? Dude, a lot of Switch games are completely overpriced. Resident Evil 4, for example, digital only was like 30 bucks. You know, so many games come out and they get that Switch tax. I really feel Ubisoft did a great job pricing this at a great price. Not to mention it comes with the Liberation remastered game. So you're getting two games technically for the price of one. There's also free DLC, the additional missions, you know, the additional solo missions are available in here. And there's so much content alone in the main game that gets unlocked as you progress. You know, eventually you can recruit allies to do certain things for you to cause distractions, stuff like that. You can pickpocket, you can swim, you can climb practically everything that has a surface that you can grab on. The game changes the settings quite often. You know, one minute you'll be playing as the father set in the American Revolution. Then it goes to modern day times with Desmond. You know, there's little kind of like intermission breaks between the main game that go to like present time with Desmond and stuff like that. And that's really cool to explore the setting and the city and stuff as Desmond. Then it goes back to Connor and you even play as like Connor's mother for a little bit and stuff. So the story is humongous. There's like a lot of stuff in here and it was really impressive. It really does feel like a movie. Uh, I, I feel overall Assassin's Creed 3 works as a port you know aside honestly the game itself had no major stumbling blocks no major issues the cutscenes and the audio were the only thing that I saw technical problems on so I, I honestly think this was a decent remaster it's just it didn't look good with the audio and cutscenes so I would rate Assassin's Creed 3 remastered a 7.5 it's a little slow Cutscenes are kind of weird and kind of frame ratey issues and stuff. The sound is kind of wonky, but the game itself is still just as memorable as I remember it playing originally. So guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. If you're brand new to the channel, feel free to throw a subscription, comment. Don't forget to like, dislike. I'll see you on the next one, guys. Have a great day. Peace out. Consider supporting 8-Bit Eric on Patreon for just a dollar a month. Link below in the description.